the thing about solving trusses is it's not super difficult, but it's kind of tedious. And uh, the bad part is if you mess up somewhere, you're pretty much just done. You you messed up the whole thing. So uh, I kind of broke it down into several steps to follow. Uh, I'm going to go through them one by one. But um, first of all, what I mean by solving for a truss just means uh, you have a a little setup here and it's a it's a little rig it's 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 set up a little sideways more than we're used to but uh, basically it's attached you have your pin which is attached uh, and it it, uh, it applies a horizontal and vertical force and then you have your roller which in this case uh, only applies a horizontal force but then you have the 200 pounds here 200 pounds here and what I mean by solving means you figure out what are all the forces on all the little joints and then what are the forces on all the members and so that's what we're going to do uh, so first thing we want to do is check the equation 2j equals m plus r just to make sure it's solvable because if this equation is not true you cannot solve this so 2j means joints so we have one two three four five joints so we have our five uh, times two so 2j two times five is equal to m plus r so m is the members we have one two three four five six seven members plus the reaction forces uh, so the reaction forces would be like I said we have two reaction forces here because it's a pin and we have one reaction force here because it's a roller so that brings our total up to three so our 10 equals 10 we are good to go so that is step one check all right step two is sort of involved but we ain't seen nothing yet so what i'm going to do is i'm going to replace the pins and rollers with reactionary forces uh, now by replace uh this is a printed out thing so it's gonna be uh i won't be able to erase things but what i can do is just all right like i said it's a pin and we know that it's going to have a reactionary force uh either up or down but typically what you want to do is draw the arrows into the joint uh, and then if it ends up being negative at the end, in other words, you get a negative number, number, a negative value, then you know you have to reverse the arrow. So I'm going to draw an arrow going downward here. Uh, that is going to be my reaction force of E in the X direction. And tell you what, I'm just going to erase this uh, equation up here. I think we're good with that. Just kind of get out of the way. So that is, uh, that is not the X direction, that is the Y direction because it's downward. Okay, and then we have our reaction force of E in the X direction right there. We have our, this is a roller, so we're only gonna have uh, perpendicular to that. So this is the reaction force of D in the X direction. Okay, done. So step two, done. Pins and rollers are replaced with reactionary forces. REY, REX, and RDX. Then we're going to choose a pivot point. Usually it's the pin. So we're going to pivot around E just to make things easier. Like I said, uh, usually just choose the pin. And that makes, it doesn't really matter because as long as you're consistent, it'll work out no matter what you choose. Now we're going to solve the reactionary forces. And as you can see, it's going to be fairly involved. All right, this is going to be a, a lot of steps here, and that's okay. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to list the counterclockwise and the clockwise forces. So I'm just going to list them out. Um, in this case, uh, what we uh, what we know is, let me make sure this is on the screen, is the different forces are going to be, well, we've got the reactionary forces. So we've got the, mm, how did I write this before? Yeah. So E is our pivot point. So basically we're going to have a force at A. So the moment of A. So I'll need to clarify those directions a little bit more. I'm just going to list the uh, counterclockwise and clockwise moments, not forces. In fact, let me just adjust that right now. Moments. <clears throat> All right. So anyway, the moment at A is, well, it's pointing downward here. We're pivoting around E. And so that's going to be a counterclockwise direction. Let's see CW. Uh, we have a moment at C, and that is also counterclockwise. And 
Then we're ignoring E because that's our pivot point. But then our uh, we don't have any forces at B. We don't, and we're left with D. We do have a reaction force. So the moment at D is going to be pushing against that. It's going to be pointing up, pushing clockwise. So that's a clockwise direction. Okay. So uh, just again, just kind of get familiar. The 200 and 200 are, are pointing downward. So they're going. They're revolving uh, counterclockwise around E. The reaction force at D is is pushing clockwise. It's pushing the opposite direction. Okay. So going to our little steps, we gotta remember that the so we did this step A. Okay, and we actually did step three as well. So four A is done. Four B, we're gonna solve for the moments. Uh, gonna be all this. The sum of all the moments have to equal zero. In other words, what we're gonna do is solve for all the reaction forces right now. And to do that, I'm going to go back to my little list here. And basically what I'm gonna do is the sum of all the moments is equal to zero. And to help us with that, what that basically means is that this plus this plus this has to equal zero. But we can use a little trick and we basically just put all the counterclockwise moments on one side of the equation and the clockwise moments on the other side of the equation. So what I mean by that is uh, the moment at A plus the moment at C is equal to the moment at D. All right, so because they're going in opposite directions, they're going to cancel each other out is what we're doing there. So if you remember, uh, moment is equal to force times distance. And so the distance has to be perpendicular to the force. So what we're gonna do is the moment at A, if we look at A, we have a two, we have the the 200 pounds of force pressing downward that is perpendicular to this distance right here so the moment at a is going to be the force which is 200 pounds times the distance which is 5 plus 5 it's the total distance from the pivot point e all the way to a so times 10 plus the moment at C, and C, the force is also 200 pounds, but the distance here from E to C is only five feet, so five feet. Now we'll equal the moment at D. Uh, now we gotta be careful here because the distance you might say is zero, but we gotta look at the perpendicular distance. So the reaction force is horizontal, so what is the perpendicular distance? It's gonna be another five feet from the pivot point. All right, so the reaction force, we don't know what it is. In fact, that's what we're trying to solve for, times the five feet. Okay, so now we just solve that. Uh, so 200 times 10 is 2,000, plus 200 times five is going to be, I believe, hmm, why can't I do this in my head? Five times, oh, a thousand is equal to five times the reaction force of D in the X direction. So again, we're just solving for our unknown. Uh, and so I'm just going to say 3000, and I'm just gonna right now divide by the five, divided by five is equal to the reaction force of D in the X direction. And if I do the math there, it turns out that my reaction force is 600 pounds. Okay. So we just solved for uh, the moments right there. We've solved for that reaction force using the moments. Okay. So kind of skipped. Let's just kind of scooch this up a little bit. Okay. We are just right at B. Okay. So we just solve for the reaction forces, or at least one of them, uh, around the pivot point. We can only solve for the one we don't know, and the pivot point was the other one. So our next step is going to be to update the diagram. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to erase my RDX 
you'll notice I have to keep referring to, uh, I don't want to mess this up. And so you'll see me looking and checking and, and pausing every now and then because I, it's easy to mess this up. And like I said, once you mess it up, you're, there's no going, well, there's going back, but it's a pain. So we know that our reaction force at D in the X direction is 600 pounds. So I updated my diagram. Check. All right. So next thing we're going to do is is basically use the idea that not only are all the mo the sum of all the moments going to be equal to zero but the sum of all the forces in the y direction and then later on in the x direction needs to equal zero so i put a little line right there i might end up using more than one sheet of paper um so the sum of all the forces in the y direction has to equal zero because this thing is, it's, this is statics, it's in static equilibrium. And that's just, so that's by definition, we, we're gonna do that. So what I'm gonna do now is go back to my diet, my little steps list here. I'm gonna list all the ups and all the down forces. Then I'm gonna put all the downs on one side of the equation and all the ups on the other. And I'm going to solve and update my diagram. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, there's a lot of sliding around here, so. I'm gonna look at all my ups and down forces that I know. And the one I know is I have got a 200 pound force downward here, a 200 pound downward force here. And I know that I've got REY here, the reaction force of E in the Y direction here. Also allegedly going down. It can't all be going down, so we know something's up, but we're gonna list them down anyway because that's just how it is. So we know that we've got 200 pounds down, 200 pounds down, and the REY also down. All right. So we're going to do the same or at least a similar thing as what we did for the moments. We're going to set them equal to zero because the sum of all those has to equal to zero. So normally what I would do is I'd say all the downs on one side of the equation and all the ups on the other side of the equation. There are no ups, so I get to go like this. 200 plus 200 plus RE, RE, Y is equal to zero. All right, so now I need to solve for RE, Y. You can see where this is going already. So 400 is uh, plus R E Y is equal to zero. I'm gonna subtract 400 from both sides. So R E Y is equal to negative 400 pounds. Uh, so we can't have a negative number. Uh, in other words, what that means when you get a negative number is we have to reverse it. So basically what that means is R E Y is equal to 400 pounds upward instead of downward because we got the other direction. Put a little box around that to remind me that it's important. Uh, I'm going to update my diagram with R E Y. See, there's my diagram. So I can erase R E. Actually, I need to erase this downward arrow. I need to make this an upward arrow. And we know that R E Y is equal to 400 pounds. All right. One more reaction force. And so to do that, we're gonna do something very similar, but with the X's. So the sum of all the forces in the X direction has to equal to zero. This time, instead of lifting, listing all the ups and downs, I'm gonna list all the lefts and all the rights. I'm gonna put all the lefts on one side of the equation, all the rights on the other side, solve for the missing variable, and then update the diagram, just like before. Okay, so I got a little room over here. Let's do it right here. So the sum of all the forces in the x direction is equal to zero. <clears throat> I have, basically I have R, E, X, and that's going to the left, just from right here. I have my 600 pounds also going to the left, and that's it.
looking at my diagram, I got nothing else, to, nothing else horizontally. So, like I said before, put all the ones on, that are pointing to the left on one side of the diagram, put all the ones that are pointing to the right on the other side of the diagram, and, or not diagram, uh, equal sign. And so since we only have uh, that, we are basically gonna say R E X plus 600 is equal to zero. We've got nothing pointing to the right. Uh, so, I mean, you can see what's gonna happen here. Uh, R E X subtract zero, or subtract 600 from both sides. So I'm gonna get a negative 600 pounds. So that means that R E X, the reaction force at E in the X direction, is 600 pounds to the right. All right. Um, yeah. So double check here. Okay. So I'm going to update my diagram now. So R E X, the reaction force of X of E in the X direction. I'm going to update that. I'm going to erase that and put a number and I need to erase this arrow because it is basically attached to the wall up there and is pulling in this direction and it is 600 pounds. All right, we're getting somewhere. We have now replaced all the reaction forces with our, with actual numbers. All right, and just, we just used the moments to do that and then we summed up all the forces in the X's and the Y direction and everything needs to equal to zero. So what is next? Now we have to solve for all the members, all right? Members being all the little like sections in between the joints. <clears throat> so what are the forces there? What, are they pulling, are they pushing, are they compression, are they under tension or what? So you may have noticed I left a little room up here at the top right corner of my paper. Why would I do that? Well, I want to redraw the diagram with only forces. I'm gonna assume all the members are in tension. In other words, I'm gonna have all the arrows pointing away from them. So I'm gonna start here, I'm gonna draw A, and I'm going to have a little arrow going like that, and an arrow going like that. Okay, and then so down here, and let's go over here. So this is C, I'm gonna have an arrow pointing like this. I've got my 200 pounds, I forgot that over here. So arrow, also 200 pounds. C has a, a member pointing down and a member pointing diagonally and a member pointing to the right, which brings me to E, which has, now we know it's an upward force of 400 pounds. We have a leftward force of, well, we don't know. We have a downward force and we have a rightward force of 600 pounds, okay? Uh, and that is E. Down here, we've got B and it's an upward force of something. We have a diagonal going toward A. We have a rightward force here and here we have D, I'll, I'll write the letter after I put everything in. 600 to the left, we have some force going upward and we have some force going to the, also to the left. Okay, I believe that's all of them. If not, I'll have to update it later, but I've got my react, my force, my force, my reaction force, reaction force, reaction force, and all the members, I believe are, oh, no, I did miss one. See, you gotta pay attention. We got this one here that's heading towards C. So uh, if I had to redraw that arrow later, I'll redraw it, but. All right, I'm gonna put a little nice little box around that to contain it and make it look pretty separate anyway. So that is 5A, redraw the diagram with only the forces, assume all the members are in tension. In other words, the arrows point away. In other words, we are assuming that all the unknown arrows anyway, they are, all those members are pulling on the joint. All right, we know that's not gonna be the case. Some are gonna have to be pushing, they're under compression. But if we get a negative number, we will know. All right, 5B, because we're solving for the members. I'm going to isolate a joint. 
Uh, what I mean by that is I'm going to choose a joint and I'm going to go logically with this. Um, I'm not going to choose one with a whole lot of unknowns. For example, I would never choose C first. There's just too many unknowns. I can't solve for that. Uh, I know 200, but that's it. I've got all these other arrows to solve for it. That's not going to work. A is too many. B is too many. E or uh, D is probably going to be a good choice. I think I'm going to go with E to start with because I know two of the four, there's no angles involved. This is going to be very, actually pretty straightforward. So let's go from here. And I'll just mark my arrow to show the direction I'm going. Downward. Okay. So isolated joint. All right, we're going to choose E. So let's see. Here is E. Here is E. And so I haven't labeled it yet, but this is E right here, this little dot. Um, so then what I'm gonna do is draw a free body diagram of the joint. I'm gonna resolve any angled forces into Fx and Fy. I'm gonna use the uh, angle is equal to the inverse tangent of the opposite over adjacent, if necessary. We don't, we're gonna find out we don't need it for this one. And then we'll go from there. So first of all, let's check my, uh, Okay, this one is gonna be very straightforward. So this is joint E. And so I have a 600 pound force to the right. I have a 400 pound force upward. I have, this is where you uh, want to, this is why we're gonna look at these separately. I have going to the left, the uh it's going towards c this is what we call c e because this is the member between points c and d member between those those joints this one is uh going to be e d because it's a member between e and d so let's call it e d okay. you, you could probably already figure out where this is going to go this one's pretty straightforward but let's follow the steps anyway maybe you don't because this is tedious to say the least okay so we don't need to do that. We don't have any angles. Okay, so here we are, Let, point D. I'm gonna list all the X and Y forces with direction in a T chart. <clears throat> um, we don't need trig, but we'll get to that. We're gonna to get to that, that little sub step later. So T chart. So my X forces, I've got with arrows, 600 pounds to the right and CE to the left. I've got my Ys, which is 400 pounds up, and ED, which is down. All right. So I just listed all the forces in the X and Y direction. Then my next step, since I don't letter E, step E. And I'm not crossing things out anymore because we're gonna have to go back and repeat some of these steps a lot for each joint. Uh, choose X or Y depending on which has the least number of unknowns and solve for the unknown. And the way we're gonna do that is, uh, well, I'll show you. We're gonna, we're gonna sum one of the forces. Uh, we're gonna set them all the, all the forces equal to zero, similar to what we did in, in previous steps. Then we're gonna sum the other forces to zero. We're gonna, after, after we solve it, so we're gonna choose all, out of the forces in the X direction or all the forces in the Y direction, and then we're gonna do the other one. We're gonna update our drawing, and then we're going to basically repeat for the next logical joint. So these uh, list, this list of steps, by the way, is on the OneNote. Uh, I'll have it linked maybe in the um, maybe I'll have it in the uh, in the notes as well for this video. Okay, so it doesn't really matter. These are gonna be equally easy to solve. Let me get my face out of there. It's going to be equally easy to solve. We can solve for X, we can solve for Y. Uh, just to be consistent, it doesn't really matter, but let's just do with the X first. So in other words, the sum of all the forces in the X direction has to equal zero. Well, what are all the forces in the X direction? It is 600 and the CE force. Now, similar to before, I'm going to put all the ones that are going to the right on one side of the equation and I'm gonna put all the forces that are going to the left on the other side of the equation. So we got 600 pounds is equal to CE. And there's nothing really more to do there. So, cause we literally just solved 
or joint CE. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm going to update all my little diagrams. So the CE uh, is, I think I just moved. So CE, where were we? Okay, I don't have to actually, and it's it's positive number. We got a positive number. So our assumption about it being um, uh, tension is correct. We don't have to reverse it. So CE, I'm going to change, I'm going to just add 600 pounds. So 600 pounds, right there. CE is 600 pounds, right? Then, uh, and then you know what, I'm gonna add it to my an original diagram here just because 600 pounds okay let's do the same thing for our forces in the y direction so the sum of all the forces in the y direction is equal to zero in other words 400 is equal to ed so because just like before and i'll slow down put all the uh, upward forces on the one side of the equation put all the downward forces on the other side of the equation and then solve for the unknown well it's kind of easy for this one. ED is equal to 400 pounds. And since I got a positive number here, our assumption is correct about it being under tension. I'm going to go back and update my diagrams. So ED, this one right here, 400 pounds. And again, just for completion's sake, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to adjust this or update this and also say 400 pounds right there. So that member, is under tension with 400 pounds okay which i guess kind of makes sense because it's being pulled downward uh, by uh the uh by the other members you don't want to you don't want to really uh, approach this with a conceptual model let the math let the math do its work and then you can then you can see uh what actually is going on here so yes it makes sense i guess that this is under tension this is being pulled downward, but I mean, you never know. Okay, well, we just did one. So I'm going to put that separate. So that is point, what do we do? E, that is point E. E is good. <clears throat> All right, we're not done yet. There's one, two, three, four other joints we have to solve for. But as you can see, you just follow these steps and, it, and it's, it's tedious, it's, it's not super difficult once you get used to it, but as you can also see, once you mess up, if you mess up, it, you're, you're in trouble. All right, let's continue then. So now the step says literally isolate the next logical joint and repeat the steps. Well, what's gonna be the next logical joint? Let's take a look. We now know all of E, and it, I suspect it'll be D. In fact, let's see, we know it's 400 up, we know this is 600, we know we got two to solve for here, but that won't be too bad. We've got one, two, three unknowns at C, so I don't wanna do that. Two, yeah, we don't have enough. Let's do D. D's gonna be, we have two knowns and two unknowns here. So that shouldn't be too bad to solve for. All right, that's gonna be our next logical step. So, D. All right, all right, so it looks like this. So I'm gonna put a little point here. I've got, make sure it's on the screen. So I'm gonna put 400 pounds that direction, 600 going to the left. Now the physicist in me, the physics teacher in me says this is incorrect, but this is engineering and we just draw it as we see it. So it works, right? Usually in physics, to clarify, you would draw all the arrows pointing away from the, but this is in physics, that's fine. We have a force going like that, and the name of that force, since it's heading towards C, we're just gonna call this CD. And we have one more force going in this direction, and that is going to be B. D. All right. I believe that's all we've got. This is joint D, so we can label that now that we have a little bit more room. Okay. So remember a while back we said something about using trig? Well, here we go. So draw, draw, draw the free body diagram. 
uh, with the joint resolving angles into f, x and x, y. So I didn't do that part, let's do that right now. So we've got the CD at an angle and you never wanna deal with angles. You always resolve it into its y and its x components, okay? So in other words, this is CD in the x direction and this right here, see how I can squeeze this in there, this CD in the y direction, all right? So, bloop, we're gonna use this formula using the distances to solve for the angle if necessary. So it is necessary now, and so we're gonna do this. Um, now, looking at our diagram, we've got five feet up and five feet over. So we're basically working in this triangle right here, and we're essentially trying to solve for this angle right here. Now, yes, Right now we could say, well, it's a five and a five. Both sides are the same, five, five here, five here. So this has gotta be a 45 degree angle. That is gonna be correct. But let's just for the sake of practice here and the sake of demonstration, I'm going to just show you that. So the angle, this angle right here, is equal to the inverse tangent of the opposite over adjacent TOA. So the opposite is gonna be the CDX, actually it's not the CDX. I, uh, Got to be careful here because we're using the distances to solve. We don't know these forces. So the distance is 5, and the distance CDY is also 5. And when you take the tangent of 5 over 5, or the tangent, the inverse tangent of 1, you in fact do get a 45 degree angle. So we know that that angle is 45 degrees. So I'm just going to put this in its own little box right here. We know we're working with a 45 degree angle. We knew that before, but we just double checked the math. So, <clears throat> now, we did that tangent. You see how I'm always checking back to the list? That list is gonna save your life until you get used to it. Uh, hopefully, you, this comes to you. The more you do it, obviously, the more you, you repeat it, the more you're gonna get it. So now I'm gonna use um, X and Y forces. I'm gonna make a T-chart. And then I'm gonna have to do this use trig to set X and Y variables in terms of the other member. I'm gonna, I'll explain what I mean by that. So first of all, I'm going to list my X and my Y. So let's just do that right below it. So my X forces. Well, we've got 600 pounds to the left. We have BD going to the left right there. And we have CDY also going to the left. And that's all the horizontal forces on that joint. So now all the Y forces, well, we've got 400 pounds going up. We've got, that's it, C, D, Y also going up. Oh, we know that can't be the case, but it is what it is. So now what I mean by putting um, everything in terms of the, how did I, how did I phrase it? In terms of the member name. So in other words, we don't want CDY and CD hit. We don't want CDX and CDY. So here's my little mistake I made. You see how it's easy to make a mistake. That one would have fixed itself. I would have realized that was silly, but uh, like just now I did. So we don't want CDX and CDY. We want it in terms of the actual member name. So if we look at this in terms of a triangle, I'm just gonna redraw it. So I've got a triangle here. It's a 90 degree angle, 90 degree triangle. And here we have CD. Uh, this is gonna be our CD in the X direction. This will be our CD in the Y direction. Here's our 45 degree angle. Uh, this is our opposite side and our adjacent side. And so what we can do is put those uh, CDX and CDY in terms of CD. And the way we're gonna do that is basically we're gonna use the trig. Uh, we have the opposite and the adjacent, so katoa. So uh, what it ends up coming to be is basically the uh, the hypotenuse will be equal to the sine, of, uh, it'll be equal to the, the opposite times the sine of the angle and the hypotenuse, in this case CD, will be equal to the cosine of the adjacent, uh, the, cos the cosine of the angle times the adjacent side. Let me just write this down. So in other words, it's going to be H, um, that's not right. 
it'll be the adjacent side is equal to and so so ka so it's cosine so it's I'm gonna write this in general terms and then I'll write the actual the hypotenuse times adjacent is co ka cosine of the angle and the opposite side is equal to the hypotenuse times the sine of the angle all right so that's where I'm coming from this is the trick I'm talking about so the adjacent side in our case is C D Y is equal to C D times the this is the adjacent side gotta go slow so that means it's gonna be the cosine of 45 so I'm just double checking adjacent side it's ka yep okay it's always good to double check slow down sometimes and double check our CDX will be equal to CD times the sine of the angle of 45 degrees all right I'm just gonna put that in a little squiggly box because I'm gonna come back to that <clears throat> now why did I do that okay like before we are going to say, well, the sum, the sum of all the forces in the x direction has to equal zero. Which means that if I take all these forces in the x direction, I gotta add them up and they should equal zero. All right, and like before, I'm gonna pull up, put all the forces that are heading to the left on one side, and all the forces heading to the right on the other side. And so I get, 600 plus bd plus and i should i could say cdx but that's why i did this other thing plus cd times the sine of 45 degrees is equal to zero <clears throat> and so hmm, i'm gonna have to come back to that one you know why we've got two unknowns and if you ever do this it's a, it's a it's a common mistake when you realize you got two unknowns you won't be able to solve for it i should have looked and realized hey look i got two unknowns on the x side i only got one unknown on the on the y side so i'm going to come back to that and so i'm going to say well mm, the sum of all the forces in the y direction equals zero and this one's gonna be a little bit easier so i'm going to say they're both going up so I'm gonna put all the ups on one side, all the downs on the other side. So 400 pounds plus CDY is up. But here again, CDY is CD times the cosine of 45. So CD times the cosine of 45 degrees is equal to zero. Now you can see what's gonna happen. We're gonna solve for CD. So, just doing some basic math here. Uh, CD is gonna be equal to, and I'm gonna to to subtract 400 from both sides, so negative 400, and then I'm gonna divide by cosine of 45 degrees. So CD is equal to a negative 565.65. And since we don't want a negative number, this tells us that uh, our assumption was incorrect. And it turns out that CD is going to be 565.69 pounds. And it's not under tension, it is under compression. All right, so that is our CD. <clears throat> so, usually whenever you solve for a member, it's always a good idea to go back and adjust or um, update the, the force diagram so i'm going to go all the way back up to the top of my paper and now i know cd which is this diagonal here is and tell you what it's under i'm gonna to have to update these arrows anyway so i'm going to erase them they are not under tension and i'm going to draw this a little bit more like in this in the correct direction it is is under tension under compression i mean and it is 565.69 pounds and you're like do i have to go to the hundredths for this i mean it doesn't hurt we could always adjust later we could always round later but if you round too early it's going to mess up all your other all your other uh answers 
All right, so we now know this member. Look at it, we've got like the whole, see, see how we're doing this? We started with an easy one and we just sort of just keep working our way out from there. And eventually we're gonna get all of those. All right, so where are we at? We're at the bottom of our paper. So you can see why this is gonna be helpful right here because uh, let's just kind of separate this. Okay. See how we had two unknowns over here? Now we only have one unknown because we can replace CD with our number, with our answer. So what this actually becomes is 600 plus BD plus 565.69 times sine of 45 is equal to zero. And if I just solve for BD right now, BD, I'm gonna have to subtract those both. So uh, basically what's gonna end up happening is, where am I at here? Uh, so I go, again, wanna double check. This is the sum of all the X's. Yep, all the forces in the X direction is, well, let's see. I'm gonna have to subtract and then subtract again. So when I subtract, I'm gonna get this, this answer. It's basically gonna be 400 minus 600 pounds. So you could double check the math, but I'm gonna to try to be, I'm gonna, I'm gonna basically get a negative 200 pounds for BD. So what that, of course that means is BD is actually under compression. Compression. Going through the pencil lid on this one. Okay, so BD is 200 pounds under compression. And so I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna update my force diagram all the way to the top. So BD is, first I'm gonna adjust the arrows because those are not in tension anymore. Hey, what is that thing? All right. So 200 pounds. This way. Okay. Look at that. We've got more than half of it done, it seems like. We've only got a couple more, one, two, three more members to solve for. This is going great. Or we, I don't even know how far in we are. So you lose all track of time when you're having fun like this. So basically, again, we just do our steps. We isolate the next logical joint. We, we've solved that one. So let's take a look. What is gonna be the next logical joint? And uh, let's see, probably, yeah. So the next logical joint looks like it's A and B are still kind of in. C, now we have, we know the 200. Let me make sure I'm on the screen here. We have the 200 pounds down. We have the 600 point, pounds to the right. We have this to the upper. And we got, so we have three knowns and two unknowns. That seems like a pretty good deal. I think we could do that. So let's go back and see what kind of room we have. All right, so I'm gonna very, get rid of that. Okay, <clears throat> I think we can squeeze this on one sheet of paper. All right. So we're going to do C. So I've got a force diagram here. Let's see, do, 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 do. Good. And I know C, I'm looking at above. So uh, it's gonna get kind of tough to squeeze on us. I'm just gonna draw, we're 200 pounds down. We, we got all these forces. I'm just gonna redraw all this down on my thingy. So you won't be able to see me where I'm coming from unless I go, nope, won't fit. All right, point is, I've got 200 pounds downward. I've got 600 pounds to the right. I've got, what would this be? AC to the left. I've got, is that BC? Yep, BC downward. And I've got this diagonal going down this direction and that is gonna be five, 65.69 pounds. So we have to solve for A, C, and B, C. That's not too tough. So let's see, we need to draw our little triangle because we have an angle. So uh, that's gonna be, this is a 90 degree angle. <clears throat> so from before we know this is gonna be a 45 degree angle. I'm not even gonna mess around with that. We know it's a 45 degree angle because it's the same, it's on the opposite side of the triangle that we were working with earlier. So it's a 45 degree angle. Uh, you could double check, it's, it's always good to double check, but it, it is. And so um, what I'm gonna do right now is just list all the forces in the X direction and all the forces in the Y direction. 
So, do, 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 do. so all the force in the x direction, well, we've got 600 pounds to the right. I've got AC going to the left, and I've got basically what comes out to this right here, um, which is gonna be, let's see, let's see, it could be the opposite side. So it's gonna end up to be, if you, if you figure this out, this little, so this little bottom part of the triangle, uh, it's going to be the opposite side of this angle, so you can do so opposite is going to be so so sine So it's going to be this uh, it's going to be a mess 565.69 times and the opposite is sine. No. Yeah sine sine of 45 which is going to be believe it or not 400 pounds even and that is going to the right <clears throat> so forces in the y direction now oh, easy enough 200 pounds going downward uh we've got bc also going downward and we've got the now the x component of this diagonal uh it's a 45 degree angle I'm going to do the same thing as I did here, except I'm going to use cosine. So 565.69 times the cosine of 45, and I'm going to actually get 400 pounds. Pounds, uh, and that would be downward. Okay, downward. Yes. Wait a minute. Hmm. Okay. Oh, what? Okay. There's a problem, but this is why you always double check. So check this out. I have this 565.69 uh, as a tension force. I was going off the old assumption, but I needed to update this. This is a compression force. So I need to very carefully apologize. And then I need to fix this arrow so it's actually going toward the joint which means that this 400 pounds is not going to the left, and this 400 pounds is not going downward. This 400 pounds is going to the right, and this 400 pounds is going upward. So left and upward, left and upward. Okay, so this is why it's important to update your diagrams, and I'm leaving this in there because Mistakes will be made. You just go slow, go steady, and just keep double checking your work. Okay, so I think we're good now. We've got all our X's and all our Y's. So I'm going to check my little list of things to do. Oh, yes. Yeah. So now the sum of all the forces has to equal zero. Uh, I want one with only one variable. This they both have only one variable. This is going to be a piece of cake. So I'm going to pick either one. I'm just going to pick X. Sum of all the forces in the X direction has to equal to zero. So, so what that means is six. Okay, so now this is what I was going for earlier. All the arrows on the left that are going, that are pointing in one direction are gonna go on the one side of the equation. All the arrows pointing in the other direction are gonna go on the other side of the equation. So I've got this arrow pointing to the right and I've got these two arrows pointing to the left. So I'm gonna say, let's see, AC plus, 400 pounds is equal to 600 pounds. Okay, then we solve for AC. So AC is equal to 600 minus 400, which gives me 200 pounds. And it's a positive number, which is a good thing. So that means that, well, not good or bad, I guess it just means our assumption was correct. So it's under tension. So again, every time you solve for a member or anything, just go back and update your diagram so you don't make mistakes like I did. Uh, so that is AC. So AC is going to be 200, 200 pounds. <clears throat> and that is under, under tension. Okay, they're pulling, the member is pulling on the joints because it's, it's under tension. Okay, so let's just kind of do, do, do this. So the sum of all the forces in the Y direction also has to equal zero. So all the forces, all the downward forces on one side of the equation, all the upward forces on the other side of the equation, 
So 200 pounds plus BC has to equal 400 pounds. A cell for BC, 400 minus 200 is going to give me another 200 pounds. And that is also a positive number, so that means it's also under tension. So I'm going to go back and update B. Hang on, write this. BC is 200 pounds. So I'm going to go back to my original diagram. And I'm going to find, okay, 200 for BC. <clears throat> well, we are almost done. We've got one more to go. So we got just enough room here. Finally, we have A. So let's take a look at A. So A has these forces. We know 200 pounds down. We have 200 pounds to the right. And we have some unknown number of poundage to the diagonal downward. Um, I suppose we could do B, but it doesn't really matter. We could pick either one, honestly. Uh, we have two unknowns here and one, or two knowns here and one unknown. We have two, un, two knowns here and one unknown. It's the same thing. So I'm just going to go to A because A is my favorite letter. It's not really, I don't know. But I'm going to pick A. So A as dot and we've got our 200 now you might be able to say well do we need to do all this i could probably figure this out because yeah let's just do it just, anyway just just to make sure 200 pounds to the right we have 200 pounds downward and then a has this diagonal once again that we actually do not know this is the one we're trying to find so this is a b Okay, and just like before, we have a diagonal, so we have to do the X and the Y, or the Y and the X. This is a 90 degree angle right there. <clears throat> we can use our trig to solve for this, uh, and we probably should because we haven't done this one before, but I'm just going to do a little shortcut here because we know our triangles, and here's our triangle. We got, this is five feet, according to this, and over here it says five feet tall, so five feet tall. And I don't need to do trig because I know that if we got two sides of a right angle are the same, this is gonna be a 45 degree angle. So, I mean, done. Do the trig if you want to though. It's gonna be the same thing as before, the inverse tangent of five over five, and it's gonna give you 45 degrees. So that's a 45 degree angle right there. Okay. So just like before, uh, this is, a, B, X, and this little guy over here that sort of can't really see very well is A, B, Y, the force in the Y direction, <clears throat> and we need to solve for those. Now, just like before, I wanna put uh, A, B, X, and A, B, Y in terms of just A, B, so I'm gonna say A, B, X are, um, our side, which is gonna be our opposite side of our angle. So opposite means, we go, so we've got sine. So it's gonna be A, B times the sine of 45 degrees. And A, B, Y will be A, B times the cosine of 45 degrees. Let's put those in a little squiggly box so we can refer to those. Okay, why did I do that? Because once again, I'm gonna list all the X's and all the Y's. So let's do that. So a squiggly box here too. So our force is in the X. I'm trying to squeeze it all on one paper. So X, our force is in the X direction. Well, we've got 200 pounds going to the right, right there. And we've got ABX, a, the X component of AB also going to the right. And our Y forces is 200 pounds downward. And A, B, Y, which also seems to be downward. We probably already know that those are gonna be switched around, but we'll just go, we'll play along. All right. <clears throat> so, it's gonna be tight. And if necessary, I'll get on another piece of paper, it's fine. We know that the sum of all the forces in the x direction has to equal zero, which means that 
like before, we put all the forces going to the right on one side of the equation and all the forces going to the left on the other side of the equation. We only have to the right 200 pounds plus ABX. So I'm going to replace that with this AB times the sine of 45 degrees is equal to zero. Well, we already know where this is going, so I'm going to subtract 200 from both sides and then divide by the sine of 45. So AB is equal to, um, well, it's going to be a negative 200 divided by um, the sine of 45 degrees. <clears throat> so AB is going to be a negative 282.8. Pounds or all right, I'm going to go to another page. AB is equal to 282.8 pounds, and we had a negative. We assumed everything was under tension, but it's not. This is under compression. So I know another member. I'm going to go ahead and uh, update my force diagram. So since it's under compression, I'm going to change these arrows to reflect that. So it is pulling away now, being smushed with 282.8 pounds compression. Well, and hey, guess what? We don't even need to go any further. I don't need another sheet of paper. We don't need to do the sum of the forces in the y direction. We can, we'd get the same exact answer though, because we just solved our truss. So that's it, everything is done. We've got all the, we got forces on all the, all the joints. We got forces, we got the, we got all the forces and all the members. We've got everything, all right? So that is it, uh, again. I'll just say the steps, I'll post these up, but if you follow them uh, carefully, you should be fine. But as you can see, there is a lot of room for error. Uh, so just kind of go slow, be careful. There's a lot of steps to follow. It's more tedious than difficult, and then you should be fine. All right, so that's it. Thank you.